Our scripture lesson today comes from Mark, the 8th chapter, beginning at verse 31. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your things not on the divine, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation of them the Son of Man, will also be when he comes in the glory of his Father and the holy angels. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Our gracious God, we are thankful for your love and your grace that has brought us to this place, to this time of worship as we open our hearts to your Holy Spirit and ask, dear God, that you might guide and lead us in this journey of life. Help us to grow in our discipleship. Help us to be challenged in our faith. Help us to recognize, dear God, that you are at work in each of our hearts and our lives. We are thankful for your great grace that surrounds us and guides us. Bless us with your presence, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Since we've missed church a bit, you may not realize where we are at liturgically, but we are in the second Sunday of Lent. Lent is that journey toward Easter as we prepare ourselves for the resurrection and the joy and the celebration of the new life in Christ. Like anything of any worth, if it's going to be of any worth, There has to be a time of preparation and denial, a time of getting ready, a time of sacrifice. You do that if you're going to have a dinner at home. You'll spend hours cleaning and cooking and sacrificing to make and purchase items that normally you wouldn't purchase and make things you normally wouldn't make because you want that meal to be a celebration. And so you put forth an effort into that celebration. Well, certainly, Easter is the main celebration of the church. And we, during this journey of Lent, during this time, are on the way. We are on the journey. In fact, the early Christian movement was called the way. And individuals were challenged to be in, on that way, on that journey, moving toward God in their hearts and their lives. Certainly, John Wesley believed that we were to make progress, that simply becoming a member of the church or simply identifying with the church is is never enough. That doesn't make one a Christian. Our Christian life is determined by how we live and how it has changed us, how we are different from the rest of this world. That's how we're Christian. Have you ever made a stupid mistake? Now, be honest, and if you've forgotten, just ask your spouse. They'll refresh your memory quickly. I've made so many stupid mistakes. Each Sunday morning, we gather in the room to the side to have prayer before we come out to conduct this worship service. Several months ago, We gathered around and holding hands, and I prayed, Dear Lord, we're thankful for this service, and we pray that you bless this food. (laughs) 
and it wasn't communion. You know, maybe that's one of the good things about failing memory as we get older. We forget all the stupid things that we've done. In this story of Mark, I hope Peter lived long enough to forget his stupidity. Because Peter, who had identified Christ as the Christ and had been proclaimed as the one that was going to become the rock of the church, suddenly takes it upon himself to tell Jesus what's going to happen. You heard how you can make God laugh, don't you? Have you heard that? All you need to do to make God laugh is just tell him your plans. Because we have no idea what's going to happen. And we all make those stupid mistakes in life, and certainly Peter was one of those because as he, as Jesus proclaimed what was to take place, the suffering, the denial, the death, and the resurrection, Peter said, oh no, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And Jesus looked at him and said, get behind me, Satan. For you see, there is that temptation in this world for a number of things that we have to deal with in our own lives. Peter dealt with it in that setting, and we're dealing with it today in our own lives. Get behind me, Satan, and realize that our salvation does not depend upon how good and great and strict and correct that we are, it depends upon the grace and forgiveness of a loving God who forgives all of us. And one of the first lessons that we have to learn is that we are not the center of the universe. Now, if you have children, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes they think they're the center of the whole world, and everything evolves around them. As we grow older, Hopefully we realize that that's not the reality of life. We are not the center of this universe. We are not the center of the world. In fact, if you were to look at the pictures of the Hubble mic, the telescope that have sent back, and you were to see where the planet Earth is, it's just a pale blue dot in the vast, vast space. And right now we're one of 6 billion people, soon to be 8 billion people, soon to be a way too many people on this earth. We are not the center of the universe. We are not the center of the world. And Jesus says to Simon Peter, when you have your mind on the mind of the world and when you have your mind on the things of the world, you begin to think it's all about you. You know one of the most popular things right now to do is to take a selfie? They even have now, I understand, I don't have one and I don't want one. They even have what they call the selfie stick that you can attach your camera to, to enable you to take a better picture of yourself. Now, how narcissistic can we be in our society? And did you hear about the poor person that actually lost their life because they tried to take a selfie with a moving train coming? And they were hit. Now, the problem with we as Christian people well, we and people in general, all of this is going on around us and we don't see it. We think it's just normal. We think it's just the world. We think it's just freedom. I don't know about you, but Neil Patrick Harrison showing up in his underwear on any stage is offensive. I don't care what modern modernity says that's offensive and yet we simply accept it because too many times our minds are not on the minds of Christ 
and we've become the center of our world. The story is told of Mother Teresa when she had identified a poor family in the, in the ghetto that she went and she took to them a small bag of rice. And she was so surprised whenever that person took that rice and they poured out about half of it into a, a rag and they wrapped it up and they started out the door and Mother Teresa said, where are you going? And she said, I know a family that's also hungry. The most important lesson that we could ever learn in our lives is that it's not about us. It's about what we do for something that is bigger than us and that bigger than us is Jesus Christ. And when we do that, we begin to bear the marks of Christ on our hearts and our lives. We become, as one person has said, the people of the bruised shoulder. We, bury, we carry those marks of Christ, the marks of Christianity. You know what a stigmata is? In the early church especially, Francis of Assisi was said to be one of the first saints to experience that physical manifestation of the open wounds of Christ in the palms of his hands and his feet and his side. Now I'm sure scientists can explain it. And Christians throughout the centuries have prayed fervently for those marks of discipleship. The story is told of a monk that was one time praying and in his fervent prayer he too was praying that Lord let me know that I'm a part of the kingdom, let me know that I'm one of yours, let me know that, that I'm doing the right thing and Lord give me those signs that I need. And the monk said that he didn't get any stigmatas in his hands or feet. But he ended up with a bruised shoulder for some reason. And it was a very pronounced bruise. And the monk realized that what he had received was the bruise coming from the cross that Christ carried. If you think Christianity is easy, if you think it's convenient, if you think it's optional, I challenge you to think again. Christianity calls for us to deny ourselves and to take up our cross and to follow him. And when we follow him, we may not get all that we want. We not, may not be the center of the world. We may not have all the luxuries that we would have if we were in the world. We may not do everything that everyone else does. But we will be followers of Christ as we build the kingdom here on earth. And so we carry those marks of Christ. We carry the cross. And as we carry the cross of Christ, it changes our lives. Gallup has done some research, of course. They're known for their, all their ways in which they look at the population. And Gallup, through their analysis, realized that about 12% of the population in America is, could be classified as serious, devoted Christians. This is more than the once a month when I feel like it. These are people that come to church and leave their company at home. These are people that come to church and do other things 
if they have time. These are people that put God first and are carrying their cross. Gallup did a research of that 12% and discovered that those 12% were happier as individuals because they had more peace and understanding about life than the rest of the world. They weren't trying to play the games that the world played. So they were happier individuals. Number two, they were stronger in their family life because they weren't being torn apart by trying to please every, every fad and everything that comes along. They weren't trying to, to do what was expedient. They were trying to do what was right and building a foundation for their family. Now, number three will get you. Number three is a condemnation of a lot. But Gallup found that number three, those who were serious Christians were more tolerant of others. So simply because you're pig-headed doesn't make you a Christian. You think of that the next time you run into one of your, you know, friends. That's not, that's not Christianity. Being, being a Christian is to be able to see the bigger picture than just your own self and your own culture. It's seeing God at work in a world where God loves everyone. And number four, for those 12% that were serious about Christ, they were in service. They were doing something. They didn't come to church just to see what the preacher said. They didn't pass judgment on how this was done or how that was done. They did the work. They volunteered. And all that is so simple. All you do is see a need and fill it. That's all you have to do. See a need and fill it. And in order to see the need, you have to be sensitive to those who are around you. You have to stop thinking about yourself, and you have to start thinking about others. Stories told of an artist in Italy during that great Renaissance period where the sculptors were making all the various statues and icons of the Christian faith, that he came across a large crucifix that had been fashioned out of granite. And he bought it because he wanted to take it home, and he had the arrangements made for it to come to his house. And guess what? When he got it there, it wouldn't fit. It was too large. So he had to enlarge his house in order to fit the cross in. And that's where a lot of us are today. The cross of Christ is bigger than we can hold on to and until we learn to change. Until we learn to grow. We will not be what God has called us to be. Now, what's the difference between being of the way and in the way? Have you ever seen anyone in the way? I mean, just get out of my way. They're in the way. Well, the difference is simply this. The difference between being of the way, on the journey, moving toward Easter, and being in the way, being an obstacle, self-centered, is you're not moving. You're satisfied. You like things just the way they are, and you don't want anything to change. Guess what? You're in the way. 
God calls us to be of the way. To be people who are making a difference in this world. And so we come to this time of Holy Communion. We come with a realization that God has blessed us with so much. And guess what? This communion is for everyone here. You don't have to be a member of this church. You don't even have to be Methodist. All you have to do is love God, and you're invited to come and share with brothers and sisters in this congregation that love each other and love God and love you because we're on the way, and we want to be on the way together. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.